Now let's focus and try to solve one of the question that have been asked in the examination. Okay? Just focus on this question. The question says, draw a diagram of a mature embryo sac of an angiosperm and label the following parts on it. And the, fo uh, the following parts are given like filiform apparatus, synergid, center cell, egg cell, polar nuclei and the antibodal cells. Now this question does not complete here. It has a secondary part to this. The second part of the question says, write the fate of the egg cell and the polar nuclei after fertilization. Okay, so this question is divided into two parts. The first part is the diagram based question, which is which asks you to draw the diagram and label the different parts. Okay, it does not even ask about the function. So you can assume how easy the question will be, right? Because if you know about the diagram of the embryo cell, then it's all you have done, right? You can score very easily. Now, if you talk about the second part of the question, the question says, write the fate of the egg cell and the polar nuclei after the fertilization. Now, this is actually a very straightforward question. They are just asking you about the fate of the egg cell and the polar nuclei after the process of the fertilization. Okay. So, now we will try to answer this question. We will try to draw the diagram as well. Okay. It's fine kids. Is the question very well understood to you? What is being asked in the question? Okay. Now, let's move to the by answering this question. Now, if you want to answer this question, we should know have a prior knowledge about the process of the megasporogenesis, right? We should know what is embryo sac and how the embryo sac is being formed, okay? So, we will try to answer this question right now. Now, first of all, tell me what is the female reproductive part of the... You all know this? Tell me the answer. What is the female reproductive part of the plant? What it is calves? Quickly, I want an answer guys. The carpal. Very good Alicia. Yes, the female reproductive part flower is the carpal. And it consists of different parts which is your stigma, style and ovary. Right? And inside the ovary, you know the ovary is the swollen base. Right? It has swollen base. And it consists of one or more ovules are present inside the ovary. Right? And this ovule has a small opening present which is and is called as the micropylae. Okay? This is called as the micropylae. So, if I label the diagram properly, you will see this is the stigma. Okay? This is the style. And this is the ovary. And inside the ovary, you have the ovules present. Okay. Now, if we talk about the structure of the ovule, the one which is open is the micropyle end, which is responsible for a sepolar tube. And the other end is called as the chalaza end, which is present opposite to the micropyle end. Okay. Now, let's see what is happening here. The ovules are your megasporangium, right? Ovules are your megasporangium, which has megaspore mother cells in it, right? They have megaspore mother cells. Now, these megaspore mother cells give, re give rise to the megaspores by the process of megasporogenesis, right everyone? This megaspore mother cells gives rise to the megaspore by the process of megasporogenesis, right? Now, we will discuss how this megasporogenesis is taking place, okay? Now, this megaspore mother cell, what is happening here? Now, consider the case here. This is a megaspore mother cell. Now, what happens is this megaspore mother cell undergoes the process of meiosis, right everyone? And you know what happens in meiosis, right? In process of the meiosis, what happens is one cell gives rise to the four haploid cell. So, this megaspore mother cell is 2N and by the process of the meiosis, four haploid cells are produced. Now, these four haploid cells are called as the megaspores, right? So, these are haploid, right? And this is, these are the megaspores. 
okay now this mega spore mega spore mother cell give rise to the four haploid mega spores now what happens in case of the plant usually three of the mega spores are normal and therefore they degenerate okay therefore these all will be degenerated okay out of these four only one of them remains the functional fine this functional mega spore what happens to this functional mega spore this functional mega spore in turn gives rise to the uh, it it grows in size and undergoes the process of nuclear division okay it grows in size and undergoes the process of the nuclear division now let us focus how this nuclear division is taking place right now consider the case here if i say that i have a spore okay now this mega spore will undergo the process of the nuclear division the process of the mitosis okay so mitosis takes place and in turn two nuclei are formed okay so this will be the first mitotic division fine everyone are you understanding this the first mitotic division will take place so in turn one mega spore gives rise to the two nuclei okay so what happens now these two nuclei again undergo the process of mitosis as a result of which four nuclei are produced now so this will be the second mitotic division fine so this will be the second mitotic division now again what will happen these four nuclei that are formed will again goes the process of the mitosis right so what will happen they will now form the eight nuclei by undergoing again the process of mitosis so this will give rise to the third mitotic division okay third mitotic division will take place now as you can see three sequential mitotic divisions are taken place okay so what will happen these eight nuclei that are produced will arrange themselves in a embryo sac okay so what will happen they will form a structure something like this i will draw it here they will form a structure like this okay so this will be the structure of the embryo and inside this the haploid nuclei will arrange themselves okay so three of them will move to the chalaza end three of them will move to the micropyle end and two of them will remain at the center okay now what happens is as soon as these arrangement occurs each of these nuclei start to form the septum okay these antipodal cells antipodal nuclei that are present at the chalaza uh, they will start to form the septum and as a result of which three cells are formed at the larger end and are called as the antipodal cells okay now similarly septum formation takes place at the micropyle end as well so what happens as a result of which egg apparatus is formed okay so the cells that are formed at the micropyle end are formed the egg apparatus okay now this egg apparatus consists of the two cells which are called as the synergids okay these are the synergids and you have the egg cell okay this will be the egg cell now these three cells are your antipodal cells okay these three cells are your antipodal cells now you can see six cells are formed okay now what happens to the central nuclei that are present at the center of cells these nuclei are unable to form the stem they do not form the cell wall as a result of which they remain at the center and will form a central cell okay so this is a one central cell which has the two nuclei present at the center these nuclei are then called as the polar nuclei okay so these nuclei in turn are called as the polar nuclei fine so you can see what is happening here the three antipodal cells the egg apparatus consisting of again three cells with which consists of synergids and one egg cell 
and there is one central cell consisting of two nuclei present at the center so what is happening this results in the formation of the embryo sac which is actually seven cell but has eight nuclei okay so what is happening is the seven cell eight nucleated structure is formed okay but the one thing that you note know, note to need to be noted is the synergids has filiform apparatus okay the synergid has filiform apparatus that helps to guide the pollen tube to that helps to guide the pollen tube as well as the male gamete to fuse with the egg cell as well as the two polar nuclei okay now this was the first part of the question that we have answered so this will be the diagram of the embryo sac consisting of the three antipodal cells two polar nuclei at the central cell and there is one egg cell then there are two synergids present and inside the synergids you have the filiform apparatus okay so this will be the filiform apparatus understood everyone tell me everyone is this understood this will be the central cell okay so now let's just move back to the question with which we the question was asked okay now the question says the draw a diagram of the mature embryo sac that we have done and they, it says to label the following parts in it the first one is the filiform apparatus we have labeled it synergids we have labeled it central cell we have labeled it egg cell polar nuclei and the antipodal cell so we have done all the first, all the parts have been labeled right so now let's move on to the second part of the question but before tell me is the first part of the question clear to you all quickly tell me is the first part of the question clear to you all yes okay now let's move on to the second part of the question now the second part of the question says okay now the second part of the question says what is the fate of the egg cell and the polar nuclei after the fertilization okay now to answer this question let us first discuss what are, what happens when the male gamete reaches the end of the uh, you can say the uh, reaches at the micropylae okay now to answer this you know let's go back to this diagram okay now what happens is the pollen grains sit on the stigma right and from there they form a pollen tube and this pollen tube then grows in size and reaches and reaches at from the micropylae okay okay so reaches at the micropylae okay now as soon as it reaches at the micropylae two male gametes are there right so in case of plant cell two male gametes are produced okay so let's just try to understand what is the fate of this male gamete so one of the male gamete okay this one of the male gamete goes and fuses with the egg cell okay one of the male gamete fuses with this egg cell you see this egg cell we have drawn this is the egg cell so one male gamete fuses with the egg cell to give rise to the zygote okay so the zygote formation will take place fine now this process is called as the syngamy okay so this process is called as the syngamy okay the fusion of the male gamete with the egg cell is called as the syngamy now you also know that the male gamete is also haploid egg cell is also haploid however the zygote will be 2f right you all understood this point the male gamete is haploid egg cell is also haploid so the zygote will be 2f that is it will be diploid okay now let's consider the case what happens to the other male gamete okay so the other male gamete will go and fuse with the secondary nucleus being formed okay how is this being formed the two nuclei that are present in the central cell what happens they fuse together okay so they fuse together to form the diploid secondary nucleus okay before the fusion of the male gamete diploid secondary nucleus is formed by the formation of by the fusion of the two uh, nuclei that are present in the central cell okay diploid secondary nucleus is formed 
okay so what happens now the male gametes which is haploid go and fuses with the diploid secondary nucleus which is 2n now and will gives rise to the formation of the primary endosperm nucleus okay so primary endosperm nucleus will be formed now or you can say the endosperm will be formed okay now this primary endosperm nucleus will be 3n okay now this process this process of the fusion of the male gamete with the diploid secondary nucleus will give rise to the primary endosperm nucleus now since two fertilization are taking place therefore the in case of the plant it is called as the double fertilization okay this process will be called as the process of double fertilization because two fertilization are taking place in case of the plant okay now the question ask us about the fate of the egg cell now you can see here the egg cell undergoes the process of the syngamy it will result in the formation of the zygote and in this part of the question they ask us about the fate of the polar nuclei so what happens is the fate of the polar nuclei will fuse together to form the diploid secondary nucleus and they in turn will form the endosperm that is the primary endosperm nucleus so you can say the fate of the egg cell is the zygote and the fate of the diploid secondary nucleus or the polar nuclei will be the formation of the endosperm now this endosperm is uh, is providing the nourishment to the developing zygote or you can say the embryo okay so this was the question that have been asked so this is a very very detailed question we have discussed this in very very detail so if any part of this topic can be asked with a change of words okay 